What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. As we all now venture into the architect of the universe's expressions, we will do so by starting with the constructs of our entire reality, contained within these torus fields. Inside the makeup of these torus fields is one of the biggest and most profound pieces of math and sacred geometry combined. The golden ratio or spiral is tied to what mathematicians call the Fibonacci sequence. The beauty begins by placing one golden spiral within the constructs of this torus field model. Next, we will duplicate and mirror this spiral. And by placing them together, we begin to see the expressions of a spiral seen throughout nature and the entire cosmos itself. Yet it's when we add a third and fourth spiral to where this amazing golden ratio starts to truly define itself. And as we now have a complete shape of four golden spirals all synchronized together, we can now start to duplicate this shape, rotating it 19 degrees. It will be the collection of eight more of these quad golden spiral shapes, each one rotated 19 more degrees than the one before it. And as we go all the way around, a new shape starts to emerge before our eyes. A simple Fibonacci sequence of numbers measuring through the golden spiral and placed together now forms many shapes, but one emerges being a flower known around the world as the Helianthus annuus otherwise known as the Golden Sunflower. Welcome to all the fellow decoders out there around the world, wherever you are. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding part four of the ongoing series Architect of the Universe. And I mean, I have content for part five, part six, it just seems like it's limitless and endless. But folks, as I often say, get strapped in, throw on a pair of headphones. This one's going to be a rather long one. I got a lot of slides, but I'm going to show you some things you've probably never seen before. I'm not here to toot my own horn. I'm not looking for any medals, and I'm certainly not here to make friends, although I'm all about making friends. 
But some of you don't like me, and that's totally fine. It's kind of funny because you keep coming back to this channel. But, you know, I'm not big into opinions, ladies and gentlemen. I think opinions suck. You got to have some support with your opinion. Some of you don't want to give that. Just You just regurgitate. Hey, whatever. I'm not going to get on a rant. But I'm going to support through multiple layers my opinion during this presentation with real numbers and real math and real modalities in the occult and esoteric world. Especially in sacred geometry, physics. So... As you noticed in the beginning of this presentation, I did a little pre-recorded uh, intro, which was a major discovery of mine, and I wanted to share it with all of you. And some of you um, probably already have your jaw on the floor. I mean, it blew me away when I uh, found this discovery of the Golden Spire. I'm going to show you how, to, how that's all going to get broken down and why I decided to go 19 degrees. Well, the reason, very reason why... I went 19 degrees to turn those Fibonacci spirals and rotate them around is because of the word battery equaling the number 19 in numerology or the 91, the mirror of that 19th card in the tarot the sun card. And folks, I mean, you know, what does this shape look like right there? A sun or the sun. And there are many shapes that you can make with this. And maybe you have already found some, but this was a profound discovery for me personally. Maybe this has already been discovered. I'm sure it has, but it was pretty profound for me. And I'm going to break it all down for you during this presentation. So let's get into the topics and get started with this presentation. I got a lot of juicy stuff for you, ladies and gentlemen. In the zero position, the intro, which is what I'm doing now. I have a few slides to start this thing off with a bang. Number one, we're gonna be talking about the spiral start. Number two, we're gonna get into one six, which is the golden ratio, 1.6. Number three, golden creation. Number four, box 33. Number five, golden arch. Number six, 69 goldfish. Number seven, the Anjna or Anya, however you want to pronounce it. Of course, that's the third eye. Number eight, some real life examples, which I shared on my What's Your Question Part 12. And number nine, always love to hear what you saw during this presentation. So again, folks, this was the intro part of the little warm up to this decode. And there are many shapes that emerge and a lot of esoteric and occult symbolism can be found inside this shape cut. I could have went gangbusters with it. Here's a program. Here's one of them. This is Adobe Premiere. One of the programs I often use to create some of these video presentations. And, uh, you know, I never realized, I mean, of course, the little character at the bottom staring up, you obviously that's, you know, insinuating a sun, but, you know, it was pretty crystal clear to me once I saw that. And and I saw the connection to that. So I'm sure you can find your own. Um, and of course, the sunflower, right? It's not called a sunflower for nothing. That Fibonacci spiral is directly embedded into that flower. And quite amazing how precise and mathematically precise this reality really is, simulation or not. Here's an organization that I feel fits right into the golden ratio and this entire model. It's the organization out of Switzerland. And I am almost certain that's exactly what their symbol is all about. So let's get into the number one topic. The first one called the spiral star. And this is how, folks, this I'm going to show you with clear and convincing evidence that my, me, Logan, my life is completely scripted predestination you can call it whatever you want to call it but my life your life i believe all of our lives are absolutely scripted and rigged in the sense of being rigged to where you have you may have a lot of ch uh, possibilities in your life but you have no choice you have to go through your journey and it's all directed by the architect and i'm gonna prove it and support it right now on how i ended up coming to this decode now, I did do a decode on Gemini's gold, a 
One Hit Wonder. If you haven't seen that, check it out. And then Jacob's Ladder. It, it, it's got those kind of, it was, they were precursors to this one right here. And here is the spiral start. Now, this photograph right here is a photo of me looking down on the stairs that I must take to get to my new casita that I rented here in Puerto Morelos, Mexico. I live on the third floor. So this is coming from the third floor and it goes down and it winds down. And of course, how many steps are there in this spiral staircase? 16. 16 steps to go from the third floor landing of where I'm staying down to the second floor. And then I have to take stairs that go down to the first and into the street. But what do you think the odds would be that they would be 16 stairs? And we know that the golden ratio is 1.6. See, there, there are no accidents, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is scripted. And if you pay attention and tap into the code, you yourself can see your own script. And a lot of you are catching on and doing that. So it was this spiral, and I didn't even catch this that was staring me in the face. I didn't even catch this until I started to do this decode. And then I went outside just the other day, because I've been working on this for days now. And as I'm walking down, I'm like, oh my word, th this, is the fi this is a Fibonacci spiral. This is a golden spiral right here. And it smacked me in the face. And then I'm like, oh my God, I gotta count the steps. And I walk, and there was 16 steps. And I was like, wow, amazing. And this was a clear indicator that my life, I was exactly where I was supposed to be. And this was a clear indicator as to why I'm showing you this Architect of the Universe 4. And it's all about the Fibonacci sequence and the Golden Spiral and so many other things. And the address of where I'm staying at, the numbers of the uh, building that I'm staying at is 758. And of course, I always do the alchemy of the numbers that are tied to my life directly. And lo and behold, this is what it came out to. It's nitrogen, boron, and oxygen, 758, going over to the trusty calculator and doing the alchemy and adding them up. Look, look at what I got. I got 40.808. There's the, you know, the 88 <coughs> has so much significance in my life. But it was this 40. And I knew it right off the bat because I know where the 40 is. You go right to the string of pi. And, of course, the number 16 is the number that appears at the 40th decimal digit, digit excuse me, of pi. My last name is Piet. One of the very reasons why I've been a pioneer in using the digits of pi and all this methodology. And of course, that's 40 is death and regeneration, but this is the address tied to the alchemy, tied to the pi and tied to the golden ratio. And you go right back to me being on the third floor and the spiral staircase having 16 stairs. What do you think the odds would be that I rented a spot in Mexico that has 16 stairs and it's a spiral staircase and the address alchemically is tied to that 16 through the string of pi and my last name's pi yet do you think that's an accident absolutely not my life is completely scripted and rigged folks and i'm just following my script and i'm having a fun time with it which i encourage all of you to do as well and i've shown these intros on alice in wonderland and you know, when I was back east visiting my family and there's a Wonderland, Maine and how many miles it was from my spot. And it's just, it's so crazy how my life is so scripted and I'm just having fun with it. So let's get into the guy who made the golden ratio with the Fibonacci sequence so popular. This guy right here. And you know, it's funny because I came here to join forces and to help out Santos Bonacci. And, you know, I was just kind of joking with him the other day when I showed him some of this stuff. He was kind of floored, floored after, at the numbers, but, you know, I joke with him now because obviously his last name is a match to this guy who they call Leonardo Bonacci. And, um, and if I, if I were to show you Santos's numbers using the golden ratio, and I'm going to end up showing that because I'm going to end up showing him. Yeah, I haven't even shown him yet his numbers on the calendar. And I'm going to show you how to do that with your own uh, birthday and 
all that kind of stuff. And maybe there's going to be some significance in there for you. But nonetheless, this is the guy who made the Fibonacci sequence the way it is today. And the big standout, ladies and gentlemen, is his first name. Leonardo and the big standout of course if you look at it highlighted in red is Leo Leonardo and when you look at astrology you know the sign of Leo I have a Sun right above that the sign of Leo which is the fifth house is owned and operated by its Lord the Sun and folks we're talking about the Fibonacci sequence which is the measurement of the golden freaking ratio and this guy's birth name is tied to that itself. I mean, totally earth shattering to me and just another indicator that this entire reality is completely, 1000% emphatically scripted. When you get into the DNA, our DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's the number 69 in the numerology cipher and 69 of course is the yin yang and of course i showed the dna is the jacob's ladder if you haven't checked out my decode on jacob's ladder but it's part of that and the yin yang the jacob's ladder would be the jesus and thomas and we're going to get into that jesus and lucifer which is the personalities of the architect and the tree of life and tree of knowledge make up this right here this could be otherwise known as the belly of the beast this is where the fish bladder comes in there's so much symbology and significance to this and then of course the golden ratio fits right in there in some way shape or form so let's get into the second topic called 1.6, which is 1.6, which is the golden ratio. It's the golden ratio, and there it is, the spiral, and the measurement of the spiral, and it can be broken down so many ways, and I'm going to be showing you what I feel to be a very significant and predominant area in our cosmos, in our creation, in our reality, and I'm going to be using some real-life examples. But there it is, the 1.6, and again, I'm just gonna take you through this. I already did this with the intro, but you know, the 1.6 is a match to the six days of creation, days one through six. When you take the numbers, looking at the trusty calculator all the way to the right, when you add up one through six, you're gonna get the number 21. And this is a very special number because the 21 is tied to the phi symbol, which is the golden ratio in the Greek alphabet, because the phi symbol is the 21st letter in that Greek alphabet. And numer numerology has another say and another bolt on to support these theories, these models, and that is the word love equals the number 21. Now, when you synchronize this using common sense and logic, the creation of our reality, simulation or not, was created by way of love. We create all the time by way of love, each and every one of us do, but we also use the other half of our emotions, which is fear, love and fear. And we use these two emotions. Everything else is all subordinate. But it's love and fear that are the two main dominant emotions. And this is what the architect has. This is what the architect creates from as above, so below. That's why it says make man in our image. That's right, because the image is us. We're the simulation, the image. And love and fear is 21 and 16. And as fate would have it, the 21st letter is the phi, the golden ratio, and the 16th letter in the Greek alphabet is pi. So you have pi and phi, the golden ratio and the digits of pi, the perfect circle tied together. And of course that equals 37, which is the jack in the box card where all the jack or Jill stuck in the box, living out this reality simulation, whatever you want to call it. And this is the two emotions that we have. 21 and 16. 
and it leads to the golden spiral. These two emotions lead to the golden spiral and we expand on that. There's the circle. The golden ratio would be love and phi and the circle would be down into the hole we went into fear. It's as if the architect comes down here to live out this simulation or reality and of course doesn't know what it's going to get. I mean, it's kind of like you creating your own video game and then you having the ability to go in that video game. Would you, number first and foremost, would you do it? I'd say 99.9% .9 of all people would absolutely do it. That's, I mean, virtual reality is exploding right now. But you don't know what you're going to get when you get in there. And I think that's where the fear sets in. The unknown coming from spirit down into physical matter. And so it really, it all breaks down to the third eye, ladies and gentlemen, which I believe is tied to the love and fear that we have. And this, uh, this is the all seeing eye, which runs each and every one of us. And notice in the very dead center of your screen, the word pineal, when you break it up in its proper syllable aspects, it's a nine 14. And that's a direct match of Pi and Phi, which I just showed is perhaps the indicator of love and fear coming down into the hole by way of gold, the golden spiral. And that would be going to alchemy and turning lead into gold, going back to that golden spiral, going back to the third eye. And the nine and 14 are big time numbers, big time numbers, especially even the outcome that we get is the 23, which of course is a very lucky number in the world of numerology, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. It's the very reason why these guys wear these numbers on the back of their jersey. But when you break down the pineal or the pie and the phi, the golden ratio and pie, the constructs of this golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence coming down here into this reality and simulation, you get the number 95. 9 plus 14 would be 95. And it would be leading to this element right here on the periodic table called a mericeum. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. But you may be asking, well, what's the significance? Why would you use elements from the periodic table? They're just elements of science, right? But when you look at it and you know the secrets that are hidden, they're not secrets anymore. You realize these elements are bridges and they fill a lot of gaps to tell us numerically, symbolically, how this reality works. And these two elements right here, iodine and americium, are in fact the I am, as in the I am that I am. And this is the all seeing I, the I am. So you can, if you can start to see the patterns emerge. You can't unsee it. I am that I am. And it's the I. And this is your brain because if you cut your brain in half, you will see that. And this is the controlling station of all of our minds. And we serve the architect. The architect controls us. We are the architect in a sense. And so there it is. And it's all about the pineal gland. And it's pi and phi. 21 and 16, which again, we go right back up to love and fear. This is what we have as our two emotions. Same as the architect. And when you alchemize these two elements and to show you the significance and how strong and important this is and why this is a huge supporting piece of this theory that I'm showing all of you, it's what Nikolai Tesla said about the three, six, and nine. And when you do the alchemy of the I am, the iodine and americium, going over to the trusty calculator, you're going to get that 369. And what's really interesting is if you look at it from other ways, you're going to have the 69, the yin yang, and then on the opposite side of the decimal, you're going to have its mirror, which is the 96. And what's left, if you were to take the 69 and 96 and bring them together, you'd have the 53 or the 35, and you go right back to the eye, which goes right back to the all-seeing eye. 
just multiple ways that you can look at this folks but there is the three six and nine staring you in the face it is the i am that uses mankind to experience its own simulation slash reality this is its video game its own game i've been saying this and there are many people out there in the world of physics and science and astrophysicists that are saying the same thing just in a different mannerism I thought this was really funny and I wanted to share this with you. As I was doing this presentation, what I do when I do my presentations and my research and create my slides, I have background music playing and I had uh, the YouTube channel playing and it wasn't on this particular um, piece of music at first. I had turned it on, I don't remember what it was, but it ended up going into this and I was actually on these slides right here as I was creating, this was playing in the background. And when I ended up going over, cause I was like, oh, this sounds pretty good. Maybe I'm gonna use this. And the music that's playing in the background of this presentation at this very moment is this YouTube piece of music right here. And look at what it said. Now folks, again, you know, some of you be like, oh yeah, Logan's full of shit. And folks, I'm not trying to pull the woolly over your eyes. I'm telling you exactly the way, I have no reason to be inauthentic with you. I'm telling you exactly the way all this has transpired. I mean, if the Fibonacci spiral and my staircase and my address wasn't convincing enough that my life is completely scripted, well, this is another nail in the coffin right here. This is, this is what was playing in the background as I was making these slides and when I went and checked, Bam, there it was. And I knew right then and there, I was exactly where I was supposed to be. These just give me confirmations, reminders, and it tells me I'm in line, in tune with doing what I need to do. So let's get into the third topic called golden creation. Golden creation in the third position. And we're gonna start once again with the golden spiral. And again, we're going to duplicate that golden spiral. This is how I found this by mirroring things and duplicating things and kind of bringing shapes together. And you can do this with a lot of stuff. But of course, you know, it was when I brought this together that I really made some major strides in this presentation and all these discoveries. And of course, then I started to plug in these numbers into the string of pi because pi and phi go together. That's love and fear, folks. 1.6 and 3.1 is 4.7, which is tetragrammaton. We're gonna get into that. But nonetheless, here are the first 161 digits into the string of pi minus the three point, but we're gonna bring that in in a second. Then we want to go from the, these 161 digits, we want to go another 161 digits because remember we have one right here, the 161, and then another 161, then we combine the two. So we want to take 161 digits into the string of pi, there that is. Then we want to do, then we want to go another 161 digits past this right, this point right there, and we start off right here, and here it is. There's another 161 digits. So we have 730 and 708. Here's where the mathematical precision comes in. So I know man could never code this. So now what we have to do is we have to actually add in the three point into the Fibonacci, into the Fibonacci sequence with the string of pi. 3.1415. So this is the first 161 digits past the three point, including the three point, because we have to start with the three points, measuring into the string of pi, and then the second round of 161 digits. And here's where I know that this was accurate in its expressions. And when we were to add up the 733, we have 733 and 708. When we add up 733 and 708, we get the number 1441. And that is pi going to the east and going to the west, which of course makes this infinity symbol right there. And I, I have a feeling it's actually going to be 33 in the middle right there, which talks about the ascension and there's many, obviously many, many pieces to that, but this is what I feel is a big standout right here on those digits into the string of pi that follow the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence. 
When we take these two numbers that we found and we divide them, we get the 0.96, which of course is the yin yang. And of course I showed this in the beginning of this presentation, the yin yang fits right inside. You can put it right inside there, folks. It's right in there, creating our duality, tree of life and tree of knowledge. We live inside of duality, folks. We have love and fear, just like the architect. We are the architect playing out its own game. It's all about the nine and the six. And of course the nine and the six will fit right inside this spiral if you place the numbers in there. So when we get into the Fibonacci itself, this is where the, um, the, the value of using these ciphers for what they're for really comes into play because Fibonacci is the guy who founded the Fibonacci sequence. So of course I'm gonna place his name inside of his own cipher and we get the number 459. And then we take those 459 digits into the string of pi, and we get the number 2011. Some of you already know that could also be the 211, which is the 47th prime number. But then we go into numberempire.com and we tag that in there. The 2011 is not just any number, it's the freaking 305th prime number. And then going right back into the string of pi, the 305 appears at the 365th decimal. There's a solar lunar year on the Gregorian calendar, 365 tied. So you can clearly see that the 365 days of the year are part of the golden ratio, part of the Fibonacci sequence, mathematically precise. And these numbers support what I'm saying here. When we go a little bit further, that 459, when you place that into the string of pi, it occupies three digits. It's occupied at the 60th decimal digit, leading to neodymium and being very magnetic, but it's the 60, 61, and 62. And when you add these three digits up, you're gonna come up with the number 183. And then of course, we're gonna bridge that with the element tungsten. And this tells us so much of these expressions of the Fibonacci name through the Fibonacci numerology cipher into the string of pi. Tungsten, they used to use to make light bulbs, to make them illuminate. That's why this element right here is all about illumination. Illumination. It has nothing to do with the Illuminati. This has everything to do with illumination. Tungsten's known as Wolfram. That's why it has the W there. And the 74, of course, is tied directly to Yaldabaoth, which may in fact be the architect itself. When we go take the Fibonacci sequence itself, here it is. Here are the first 16 digits. Why did I go 16 digits in? Because the golden ratio is 1.6. So of course, it's a big deal to measure this. And the 1.6 through the golden ratio is the 16. And we go 16 digits in. Here are the 16 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. And when you add all those up, and of course we're reducing these down, you could do it all the other way as well, but it comes to the number 126. And of course we're gonna bring that into alchemy. Here's the bridge. We go right back to pieces of the key to the universe. As Tesla said, the 369, this is one half of that, the I am, and it's iodine once again. And see the big time bridge is not just stopping at alchemy, but going right back to pure math folks using numberempire.com. The number 53, which is the protons of iodine, is not just any number, it's the freaking 16th prime number, which is a direct match of the first 16 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence itself. I mean, how about that, folks? There are no accidents. This is mathematically precise. It's pure genius. No man could ever code this. And mankind is just being used. Some people get conscious of things, of course, but it doesn't really matter because your mind's not your own. You can become conscious of whatever you want to become conscious of, but your mind is not your own. It's the all seeing eye inside your brain. That's your transmission station. The little voice in your head talking right now, that voice owns you. Some of you don't want to agree with that. That's totally fine. I'm not here to twist your arm. 
The 161st Fibonacci number. How about that one? That's a big deal, right? Since the Fibonacci golden spiral is 1.61 when you extend it out. Well, there it is. Here's the long number of the 161. And when you add up all these digits, I mean, look at what you get. Here's the comedy. This is where you just got to laugh because the 161st Fibonacci number added up ends up becoming pi, the first three digits of pi, 141. And of course, then when you go in and take 161 and measure that into the string of pi itself, look at where it appears. Look at how strong this is. This is so strong, right? We're talking about pure mathematical genius right here, and man could never code this, ever. This, whatever created this reality, this is all its own design. And these are pure genius mathematical expressions right here. I mean, absolutely. So let's get into the fourth topic now called box 33. Oh, this one's going to floor you. This one's going to be a lot of fun. Here we go. This is the shape of my discoveries, ladies and gentlemen, the shape of all shapes when it comes to this presentation. And you may, some of you may already know what this is. This is the box 33. And let's break all this down and narrate it for you. So this is the Fibonacci spiral, Fibonacci sequence. And as you notice, it starts off with the one. And of course, in the Fibonacci sequence, if you don't know what that is, all it does is just numbers they end up duplicating themselves or adding themselves up. So one becomes, whoops, one becomes another one. One plus one becomes two. Two plus one becomes three. Three plus two becomes five. Five plus three becomes eight. And eight plus five becomes 13. And this is the very reason why. Well, I shouldn't say very, this is one of the reasons why the number 13 is considered unlucky. There's a stigma around it. Why a lot of hotels skip the 13th floor. Folks, it's one of the luckiest numbers. It's one of the luckiest numbers on the face of the planet. And, you know, a little fun fact for you, ladies and gentlemen. And again, just tied to my code, I was born at 1.03 a.m which is right there. And, um, you know, again, just part of my code, part of the reasons why I discovered this stuff. One of the very reasons why I'm showing you this presentation because of my code. So we go a little bit further with this because this is, this leads to so many things. And uh, first and foremost, there is the golden spiral stuck inside that box 33 and we're, this is what it looks like with the numbers on there. So the very reason why it's box 33 is because when you add up these first seven, there are seven digits in this Fibonacci spiral right here. One and one and two and three and five and eight and 13. When you add these up using the trusty calculator, there's where you get the number 33. Now, some people are gonna be like, oh, it's Masonic. It's the Masons. Folks, if you can get past that whole propaganda. 33 has nothing to do with the Masons. Absolutely nothing to do with them. Sure, they use it. But what came first? The 33 or man? 33 came first. So it has nothing to do with anybody. It's its own entity. Just got to know what it's all about. And of course, this is the first seven digits of the Fibonacci spiral. You can keep extending out. You can go to 21. That will be the eighth digit and get a different outcome. But I'm going to show you why this is so important in this expression right here. And we're going to get into it through the golden arch, the golden arch. Now, I wanted to throw this. I, this was the last slide that I created. I, I, I was like making the top and I'm like, hmm, I wonder I wonder what McDonald's has to say about this because it is known as the Golden Arch. And I was laughing. And this should be another piece to prove once and for all on top of the 200 plus videos I have now and countless breakdowns of people, places, and things. This is just another piece that should convince or prove to each and every one of you that our entire lives are scripted and everybody's just living out their code. 
The McDonald brothers, Maurice and Richard, it wasn't Ray Kroc. He was the businessman that kind of brought bought him out and brought it to the, the, the fame that it was. But it was these two guys, Maurice and Richard. And then, of course, I'm going to break down their birthdays. Absolutely. And I'm going to match it up with the cards of illumination. Most of you should know watching this, if not all of you should know what your birth card is. And um, Maurice is the seven of hearts, born on November 26th. And Richard, born on February 16th, is the nine of diamonds. Let's be really transparent with that. Here is the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination. And we have February 16th for Richard, and it's the nine diamonds. And then we have, what was his? His was uh, November 26th. We have November right here going down to the 26th and the seven of hearts. And folks, when you bring those two cards together, what does it spell out? 79. And what's 79? It's gold. And what's the color of the arch that McDonald's uses? It's yellow, otherwise known as gold, the golden arch. That's why they call it the golden arch. So do you think that these guys were sitting down with their birth cards and they knew they were the 79, which is gold. And they're like, well, we're going to create a brand and it's going to have a yellow logo and we're going to call it the golden arch because our names through the cards equals gold. Is that possible? Absolutely. But do you think that the chances are that they actually were doing that? Slim to none and Slim probably left the building. People are coming around to this now because it's being pointed out. But time and time again, I show so many people, places, and things that show these cards and show you how accurate they are. And this is just a prime example that these two guys, in my opinion, again, you don't have to agree with that. These guys' lives were not their own. The architect was ruling over them like a puppet on strings that created this brand. It's all paying tribute to the architect. It's its own design. I mean, if you ever watched or played the game SimCity, I mean, that should tell you how this reality works. But let's go back to this box 33. because we're on, the, we're on the topic of the golden arch. And I want to get into the golden arch, but I want to start off by showing you once again this box 33. Remember, remember this is the first seven digits of the Fibonacci spiral, the golden spiral. And it does equal the number 33. And of course, I'm going to add in some Freemasonry stuff. Now, I want it to be very crystal clear to each and every one of you in case you didn't believe me on the multiple things I've said so many times. I am not. I am not a person that belongs to any occult group, society. I'm not a Mason. I don't go to any lodges. I just know that there are a lot of truths in what they show the world and people have a stigma around it thinking that they're from the devil and that they're satanic and they're all this and that and I just it's just it gets funny now because these guys that are at the top levels probably know how magic works and they're like yeah give me all the magic you want to give me if you because if you're just talking about these people you're just giving them energy and they'll gladly take it. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not doing things on the world stage that are would be considered questionable or bad. I'm not debating that. That's not my point here. I'm looking for the occult knowledge and what their expressions are. That's what I'm after. That's what you should be after. Forget about all the propaganda. That's another topic. But nonetheless, this right here, this graphic that I've created. There's a reason why they have the black and white. Ch this is the dance. This is what I call the dance floor. This is earth, by the way, we folks, whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter whether you like this expression or not. We live in duality. The black and white checkerboard has nothing to do with Satan or satanic stuff or Lucifer it has nothing to do with that. Nothing. Zilcho zero, nothing. Now you can attach things to these ideas and constructs for sure. But you can also attach it to things that are, would be considered good in our reality. But clearly, this black and white checkerboard is the reason why there are 64 squares on a chessboard matching the 64 codons, possible codons in our DNA attached to the GD um, element called gadolinium, which is all about creating a television screen. And there's a lot of layers to that. But I wanted to show you this royal arch. This is astrology right here. 
This is called the Royal Arch. This is a graphic I created, and this, of course, is Boaz and Yachin. The, the pillars are made of brass or copper, which is, I believe, it's copper, and copper is very conductive, and I believe that this right here is what uses us and and owns and operates us it's the 88 constellations over our head there's a reason why there's 88 constellations there's a reason why there are 88 keys on a piano there's a reason why the keys on a piano are black and white that has nothing to do with the devil folks nothing zilcho zero the very reason why i believe there's many layers to this but there's a reason why the masons have the g in the Francis Bacon cipher, a very unique cipher using the numbers 1 through 26 for the lowercase a through z, and then 27 through 52, which I'll show you right here. <clears throat> here is the uh, Francis Bacon. I showed you how to decode your name using this cipher, but it's a very unique cipher. There are the 1 through 26, a through z, and then we capitalize all the letters and then you get into what's called dog latin which is what the vatican uses and all that kind of stuff part of their their code but uh, that's why your social security name on your card is all capital letters all tied to the vatican but 27 through 52. so we just want to get that known right now and it's very possible because this is this has many expressions i'm going to show you in multiple ways not just one so it's not just a uh you know a one shot and that's it so in the francis bacon the capital g is the 33rd letter now we know that the all-seeing eye which is not evil folks get that out of your propaganda head it is part of the zodiac wheel part of the 88 constellations and it's part of the golden ratio and the fibonacci sequence and i'm gonna support that but the masonic arch is right here the first seven zodiac signs and then of course the dance floor would be these five signs pisces aquarius capricorn sagittarius and scorpio these five would be incorporated into the dance floor when you look at the story of the titans and the olympians the titans were thrown down into tartaria and or tartarus and this is part of the titans saturn being in the very middle but nonetheless it's the sun and the moon and the earth that creates the trifecta i showed the incarnation reincarnation process through my angel falls decode but it's the 33 with the G, which is why I believe the Masons have the G in the middle of their square and compass. Square and compass equals 47 tied to the tetragrammaton. That's why they use the Holy Bible. Holy Bible has a tetragrammaton in it. When you take these first seven numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13 equals 33. There it is. Seven is a complete rainbow. Seven is right here. It's the Royal Arch, the first seven signs, Aries through Libra. Now you get into astrology. It's not from the devil, folks. Moving forward, when you bring the Fibonacci into this, the Fibonacci numerology cipher, where does the letter G fit into this? Because remember, the Masons have the G on their square and compass. <clears throat> it's the 13th letter. And of course, it's the last letter in this sequence. Number seven. There are seven numbers. There are the first seven zodiac signs. The G is the 13. What about the English? The English is the number seven. G is the seven. Remember, folks, G is a spiral. The G is the spiral. What does the word gold start with? G. What does golden ratio start with? G. It's gold. It's gold. It's gold. And the 7 and 13 are harmonious because the 13 is the last nu number in this expression. And there are seven total numbers in this expression. Very, very fitting right there. And there are the two spirals inside the zodiac wheel, which is what all of us are made up of, which is what all of us are ruled over by. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. The Zodiac wheel is super accurate. 
There's a reason why it's accurate, and that's because our complete reality is scripted. The zodiac wheel and the zodiac signs and our birthdays and the cards of illumination and this Fibonacci sequence and golden spiral have so much to do with this entire reality. And you go a little bit further and we get into the sixth topic, which we're gonna bring this into play right there. And it's the 69 goldfish. It's not goldfish and there's 69 of them. There is the 69 right there, fitting right over that zodiac wheel, which ties right into the Royal Arch and the Masonic wheel and all, all that stuff, folks. They're just, they're just tapping into that code. Well, it, it, I showed this in one of my social media posts. Here is Jesus, the original spelling in the Greek. I don't think Jesus was in the Old Testament. Some people think it was Joshua, but that doesn't make any logical sense to me. Jesus was made famous by the Greeks. Geometry, you think about all these big things, sacred geometry and all these Greek words and pi and phi and the Greeks had so much influence on our reality. And uh, the original spelling of Jesus and Thomas through the Greek is 96 and 69. I showed that. The original spelling in the Greek of Jesus and Thomas. T Thomas is Jesus' twin brother. Thomas is Lucifer. I know this may be a little bit of a struggle for some of you to wrap your minds around. It may be new information, but if you just use your common sense and logic, you do a little bit of homework and do some research, you'll realize that this is, these two brothers are the yin yang. Thomas was known as Doubting Thomas. Doubting, that's fear, doubt. And then Jesus was all about love and unity and brotherhood, love and fear. That's the duality inside of our reality, the duality of how our emotions play out. It's the duality of the architect's emotions because we are the architect, an extension of that. And notice what these two characters equal in the Fibonacci sequence numerology cipher, 666. And this is for good reason, ladies and gentlemen, because when you go a little bit further, <clears throat> and I was talking about 69 goldfish, we are all fish. We are down here in the sea of space. We're fish. If you saw my decode on the Truman Show, they made it very crystal clear that Truman Burbank had a fear of, he had a fear of water. It was called aquaphobia. He had to get over that to get on the boat and figure out this game. And the gold is all about turning lead into gold, and we're all fish, all of us. We, human beings, fish out of the sea, we're being fished. There's some significance to this whole theory. And we live in the box, and that's why there are four seasons. That's why there's north, south, east, and west. That's gold. And there's some significance to this 17 of chlorine having atomic weight of 34 tied to the spider. And some other stuff I'm going to be getting into on another decode. But it's the 69 goldfish. We're all fish. That's what Pink Floyd said. It. We're all lost souls swimming in a fishbowl year after year. So I thought it was very fitting to get into the Pisces and you know, the Pisces is the last zodiac sign, the last one, 12, clock strikes midnight. And when you synchronize all these layers that have nothing to do with one another, yet they have everything to do with one another, created by people that have nothing to do with the math that was discovered, and you can see the synchronization of all this. Pisces is the 12th sign, the two fish. There are two fish because that's the duality. Jesus and Thomas, Jesus and Lucifer, good cop, bad cop. And the 12th card in the tarot decks, the hangman. This is, we live in the upside down world. It's just light kind of, I guess you could say refracting in some sense, but it's the inversion. If you study the Obscura camera, the first cameras that ever were developed, it's all about taking an image and when you put it through the keyhole or the hole, it reverses the image. And that's where you get the upside down world from. The 12 card being the hangman, notice the illumination behind the person's head that's hung upside down. 
That is us having illumination. We are all the Jesus and Thomas fish. We all have our duality. We all have our good and bad sides when we label them as such. When you take the 12 digits of the Fibonacci sequence right there and you add them all up, and of course we're reducing down, if you're wondering how I got that, because it's gonna be more than 70, but when you reduce these like four plus four plus one is nine. So when you add all these up and reduce them down, you get the number 70. And then bringing that into the string of pi, look at where the 70's found. The 96 decimal digit, 96 and 97. It's gonna give you another outcome, but 96 is the yin freaking yang, which is the two fish. This is mathematically precise and man did not create this ever in a million years. Going further with this expression of Jesus and Thomas being the two fish and part of the Fibonacci sequence and the golden spiral and the yin yang and our DNA. It's why the, the fish bladder and Jesus was a fisher of men and all that's, that's where all these stories came from. We were all primarily, if we haven't moved into the Aquarian age, we're all born into the, the majority of us, if not all of us were born into the Piscean age. And maybe knowing where your Pisces and what house it's at will have some significance for you. If there's any planets in that house, you should check that out. But notice that the last number, the 12th number in this 12th number sequence with the Fibonacci is 144. That matches the 12 zodiac signs. That matches the age of Pisces that we're all in, or that we all were born into. This is where the number, the 144,000, the chosen ones, you're all chosen because you're here in this game. When we go 144 digits into the string of pi, it gives us the number when we add it up, 666. Now, some debate and say it's not that. Is it? Listen, folks, it's in the story. It's in the script. It can be something else, and I can find the origins of that. This is the most well-known version of it. Whether or not you want to agree with that, that's totally fine. This is the most well-known part of the script, part of the story. And whether or not this is real to you, it's real because the idea of people talking about it makes it real. And the synchronization of why I think this has so much dominance and truth to it is you see this element right here is known as the 666 element because carbon which is what we're made up primarily made up of it's what we eat food a lot of food has car it's the 666 element six protons six neutrons you know how this works carbon's most abundant weight most or i should say it's average is 12 and what's the 12 zodiac sign it's pisces this is Virgo. Jesus was born of a virgin. That's Virgo. Check out my decode on Jacob's ladder. I covered all this, but we're all the beast. We're all part of the beast folks, like it or not. And we're all part of this Piscean age, whether we shifted into the Aquarian age or not. Majority of us were born in the Piscean age, if not all of us. So let's get into the seventh topic which is gonna be the third eye. This is the spelling in the Vedic system. And you can pronounce this many different ways. Anya, Ajna, however you wanna pronounce it. What's important is knowing what it is. And let's start off with a golden ratio again, the Fibonacci spiral. And of course, this is the box 33. This one goes up to the number 13. Seven digits, seven colors of the rainbow, seven days of the week. We take that and we add another one. We flip it upside down and mirror it. Creates a spiral. Going down in a hole. And then we just want to do one more. And then we want to do one more. And this was the shape. If you remember, this was the quad golden ratio Fibonacci sequence spiral, whatever you want to call it. This was four spirals combined. And there are many layers to this. There's a infinity symbol in there. There's multiple symbols in here. But this one right here, folks, fits something very powerful 
inside of our world today. And it has everything to do with the third eye and that chakra, because this is the actual representation of the third eye in the Vedic system. This is what it looks like. And what do you see there, folks? Do you see any similarities? You see this third eye chakra is obviously very unique. It only has two petals, one on each side. That's it. And the two petals, in my opinion, represent our duality, our love and fear. Jesus and Thomas, Jesus and Lucifer, good cop, bad cop. And if you take it and you put it inside there, it fits right in there perfectly. Right there. It's not fudging anything. And as I often say, it's not trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And when you enlarge it, it fits right in there again. I think it absolutely represents our third eye. And the very reason why this whole presentation is wrapped around the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, is it's all about this third eye chakra. And the color being indigo and classically indigo can be purple. I found this graphic that it was pretty, pretty good. Some good stuff in here. And, you know, it's right there. I mean, you take that golden spiral and there's going to be four of them because that's what makes up that quad golden spiral sequence that I've made. But just to show you the spiral that illuminates out or radiates out from our third eye. And I am absolutely convinced that the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence tied to pi is tied to the third eye. And of course it would be the sign of Virgo, the virgin. Our pineal gland would be, have to be virginized, or at least that's what we want it to be fresh, nothing written on it virginized and when you break down the pineal gland through numerology it gets really interesting because i showed this earlier pineal is 9 and 14 with its syllables broken down but it's a 23 overall and that's a match to these other two other big words in our reality crown and history and you know what is the crown well the pineal gland possibly could be the crown jewel could be the reason why the Christ wore a crown of thorns and the pineal gland of course um, is the origination of all history the word the word blood equals 23 by the way so then you get into the crucifixion and you know where does that 23 found from the pineal gland numerology where's the 23 located it's the 16th and 17th decimal digits of pi and you add up 16 and 17 you're going to get the number 33 33 and that's really interesting because you know the crucifixion is tied to golgotha where the christ was crucified that is a direct match to the number 33 itself. You're not going to find that in any other ciphers, by the way. That's why I primarily, as you notice, I primarily use Chaldean because I feel it's the closest to the source as you're going to get. Doesn't mean all, any other ciphers have any, don't have merit or they're not important, but I just feel like you don't even have to use any of those to find the truths of how the machinations of this reality works. So the... Royal star of the lion might in fact indeed be the pineal gland. And, you know, the reason why I'm showing the royal star of the lion, why I'm suggesting that it could be because in numerology, the royal star of the lion, like if I go to a web page and I type in royal star of the lion, 23, you're going to find a host of information. Look at that, 51 million results. Here it is. Royal Star of the Lion, Karmic, 23, 23. So it's not a secret that the number 23 is the Royal Star of the Lion. And then, you know, you go right back to this pineal gland and crown and history, all being 23. Now you can see the significance and why 23 is so powerful. Of course, it when you reduce it down, it gives all its energy to the number five, which is mankind itself. 
But nonetheless, Royal Star of the Lion is the number 69 in numerology itself, and we know the pineal gland is the freaking yin yang. I showed this multiple times during this presentation so far. So the synchronization of this is pretty, pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate. So let's now get into the last topic. Thanks for sticking with me on this presentation. It hasn't been as long as I thought it was going to be, but I'm not finished yet. Let's get into some real life examples. And I had included some of this in my what's your question part 12. I actually had an error in there and I want to correct that error. Uh, on the total numbers and what I got for outputs. But let's get into some real life examples of the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence, the numerical patterns, all that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna show this organization right here. What you think about this organization, I'm not interested in. I, you don't, I, don't, I don't even wanna give you my opinion. I don't really care. I know what this organization is about. Um, I don't know everything about it, but there's a lot of tie-ins to things. A lot of speculation. I know where they're out of. I've decoded this many times in some of the decodes that I have littered through my catalog. But I've broken this down to show you the significance of the golden ratio tied to this organization and why I feel there's a reason why that number 322 is attached to their logo. Because you see, the golden ratio is complete when you bring two of them together. And if you take 1.61 and you add 1.61, getting out your trusty calculator, you're going to get the number 3.22. So it, it can, it's very obvious now what this 322 is all about. And there could be more layers to it. I found a lot of other things that through the years of decoding that I've been doing, but this one was very fitting right here. And I know how important the golden ratio is in the timelines in our reality in the occult world it's very very important if not one of the most important areas that you can start to decode from and with is the golden ratio so naturally i'm going to start doing some digging and this is where i'm going to suggest before i start narrating this graphic i'm going to suggest that each and every one of you take the day on the calendar of your birth and then go 161 days from your day of birth into the future and do 161 days into the past. And then you want to get your birth, those cards that are associated with that. And you're going to need this graphic right here. So if you don't have this from, you can find it online as well. But if you want these graphics, this one, I have a lot of other ones. I have uh, this, this right here. This is the 365 day of the year calendar, which has the leap years on there as well, which is a really good tool to use. I have um, the, the tarot and other graphics as well. But this one is very important and you should know what your birthday is and then you're going to go 161. Typically you just measure five months backwards and you can get a good idea. And you're going to want to use this website right here called timeanddate.com. Timeanddate.com. And when you log on, you're going to go right here to the date to date calculator and get started and find where your golden ratios are. And it's very possible, and this is completely theoretical now, that someone significant in your life could be a partner, intimate partner, business partner. Someone in your life can be found at either end of that golden ratio tied to your birthday. For instance, this organization uses that number 322. So the 322nd day of the year is November 17th. Now I want to digress and show you this because this is the 365 days of the year. And there are two, two categories or two, um, two columns. There is going to be the one on the left and then the one on the right. The one on the left is going to be that day of the year through the common years. And then the one on the right is going to be that day of the year in leap years. Now remember, leap years are every four years. Now I want to just tell all of you that this organization was first brought into this world on a leap year. 
So I measured it as such, because if you go to 322, it's right there. It actually occupies the 17th and the 18th of November. But since this organization was born on a leap year, I used November 17th, which is the 322nd day of the year in leap years. So, of course, I'm going to associate the cards with these days as well. And there's going to be significance to these cards and the, the numbers and the days. So much to look at with this. But nonetheless, we take 322 and we go 161 days into the future. And we'd have to go into the following year because November is close to the end of the year. So we then move, we'd move into June. And June 9th is the 161st day of the year in leap years. June 9th is the eight diamonds card. If you go backwards in time, going 161 days from November 17th, we get to April 27th, which is the 118th day of the year. Its card is the seven clubs. So we have April 27th, November 17th, and June 9th, all 161 days apart from one another. We have the seven of clubs, 20th card, three of clubs, 16th card, eight of clubs, 34th card. And when you start to use the calculator, I'm just showing this for reference so you can see how this works. You plug in the days. Here's the origination date. 322nd day of the year in leap years, November 17th. And then you go uh, backwards or, or forwards or backwards, actually. And you're going to get June 9th, 161 days. And then if you go backwards and do it, or I should say forwards, this one's going forwards. November 17th ends up going into the following year, April 27th, 161 days. So I feel it creates a connecting point of the golden ratio, which is why these people have the 322. It's 1.61 times two. And so when we add up these cards, the significance starts to show itself because the 20th card, 16th card, and 34th card is a total of the number 70. And when you go into the string of pi, the number 70 is found at the 96 decimal digit. That is the yin yang right there, folks. That's the yin freaking yang. When you add up the days on the calendar, April 27th is the 118th day. November 17th is the 322nd day. And then uh, the June 9th is the 161st day. Remember, this is in leap years. Look at what it gives you for a total. So I know that there's something to this. I haven't gone beyond this. And I'm suggesting and theorizing that maybe there's going to be some significance to your golden ratios and your birthday going backwards and forwards on the calendar. And maybe you're going to find some keys to your kingdom. Maybe you'll end up finding a soulmate, a partner, a business partner. Maybe you already have one. And this is the tie-in to show you that this person that's in your life is supposed to be part of your script. Because I know this has massive implications on our reality based upon the numbers that this organization is using. This is the golden ratio, just backwards. 1.6, there it is, it's an anagram of it. This is a no-brainer, folks. This is a no-brainer. So let's go a little bit further. Let's try one other example. Remember this day, how can you forget it? Well, let's do the golden ratio on this day. When you go back in time, you land on April 3rd, 161 days from April 3rd to this day right here. When you go forwards in time, you have to go an extra, you have to go into the next year, but from this day in September until this day, February of 2002, exactly 161 days moving forward. 
So these are the three days, April 3rd, the 11th, and the 19th. When you add these up, ladies and gentlemen, here's the golden ratio of that specific day that happened on our calendar. Never forget it. If you take 19 and you add 11, and then you add three, this is the number that you're going to get. Now, of course, your mind's going to be racing and you're some of you are automatically going to be pointing the finger and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not here to belittle any of that information. I just don't know. I don't have any answers. I'm just showing you the code. Whatever you believe, whatever you do with it is completely up to you. I'm not insinuating anything because there's nothing that I can prove beyond what I'm showing you here. This is all theoretical, but as I showed with this organization, this is to me very, very convincing. And these, number 96, very, very convincing. And of course we know that that together added up is 3.22. That's, that's a no brainer. So I know that there's something to this. I know there is. When we do the alchemy, Here's another layer. When you do the alchemy of these three dates, all tied to the golden ratio, 161 days in between, that date that we all remember. So we have the 19th, 161 days prior, 19 is potassium. We have the actual event itself or day that it happened. I shouldn't even say event, but the horrific thing that happened on that day, it's sodium. And then we have 161 days into the future of that day, and it's May 3rd, and that's lithium. 3, 11, and 19. Potassium, sodium, and lithium. When you add those up, ladies and gentlemen, through alchemy, look at the number that you get. To me, it's undeniable. Un freaking absolutely ironclad, un freaking deniable. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you, do you think that those that were behind what happened, do you think they were actually sitting down and using these layers to make sure that their model fit inside the narrative of all the things I'm showing you? Maybe. But if you ask me again, man's being used and man's not doing anything but living out the blueprint. And I know that may be a tough pill to swallow for some of you. And some of you will flat out refute it. You will absolutely flat out deny what I'm saying. And you have every right to do that. I mean, it's really tough to tolerate that kind of notion. But as I've shown in countless videos now, in people, places, and things, breaking them down, mankind is not his own. Man's being used. This is a simulation. Made, look, made to look and feel real. And it's the architect or architects coming down here and playing out our reality and using all of us to do it. Just like you're living out your life and right now you're inside your body, you have white blood cells and you have ciliates in the microbiology world and you're using them to survive. And you don't even probably know that. If you go study the microbiology world, there are tons of things inside your body on a micro level that you're using to stay alive. All part of the construct. And you don't even, you don't even know it. All programmed, part of the software. And you wouldn't be alive without these constructs going on inside your body. Anyway, folks, long presentation, a lot of information. And I could have added so much more information. But I'm going to ask what you saw during this presentation. And I think it was absolutely crystal clear to show ironclad and convincing evidence that I am in fact being used. I proved it. This is another absolute proof to me showing to all of you that I am supposed to be giving you this information. Whatever you do with it is completely up to you. I'm not here to force it on you. But again, I will say to some of you, if you're going to present your opinion, have some kind of support behind it. 
Don't just regurgitate something you learned by reading in a book and adopted it as your own and you have no support for your opinion. That's weak. That's those suck. And I get really firm on this now because as I continue to put out this work, more and more of you are coming out and a lot of you are, a lot of you are refuting what I'm saying and you offer nothing to refute it other than, oh, you're not right, you're wrong. That's not the way it is, Logan. And you offer nothing to support yourself. And then you get angry when I support mine and I say, like, okay, what do you got to show to support yours? And you got nothing, nothing other than your opinion. Opinions suck. I always say to people now, and I've said it and I'm gonna keep saying it. If we were to go into a court of law and you had to present your case and I had to present mine, what are you gonna present for your evidence? You see all these presentations, this one's over an hour long. I am presenting my evidence to support my theory, if you wanna call it a theory. What have you got to support yours? besides just an opinion. Because if you went to a court of law and you'd be like, well, this is the way it works and you have to convince the jury, you're not gonna convince the jury with an opinion, folks. You need some support, some evidence. So I'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. But for those of you that wanna debate me or try to say that I'm wrong, that's so, I've been wrong many times. I like being wrong, because I learn. But if you're going to refute and you're going to say that I'm flat out wrong, at least have some support on your opinion. That's all I'm going to ask. And then, you know, we can just agree to disagree. But anyway, folks, love to hear what you saw. Another long presentation. That's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decoder Reality. I thank each and every one of you for your support, your Patreons, your donations. They, they're just amazing. I love it. It keeps me going, keeps this work keeps it going, keeps it going. Thank you so very much. Until next time, folks, we will see you later.